Hi everyone, welcome to this video. Today we are going to continue with this presentation entitled Introduction to LED Lighting and Drivers. In the first part of this topic, we have seen first an introduction, then we have talked about LED lamps, and today we are going to continue with this topic talking about LED lamp supplying. In the last part, we will deal with offline power supplies for LED lamps. These presentations are extracted from my book entitled LED Lighting and Drivers, available from Amazon KDP. So if you are interested in this topic, please take a look at this book. The first idea about LED supplying is that LEDs should not be supplied with a voltage source because the LED itself, as we can see here in these different characteristics of the LED, behaves as almost as a voltage source with very small series resistance. So if we apply another voltage source, then the current is going to be very high and it can destroy the LED. So the behavior is shown here. The black line corresponds to the behavior of the voltage source. So it's almost a voltage, uh, an idea voltage source with a very low series resistance. And also we have the behavior of the LED a different operating temperature. For example, this uh, curve here, as we know, corresponds to the lowest value of the temperature. This would be the typical value, and this would be the uh, characteristic corresponding to the highest operating temperature, as we have seen in previous presentation. So when the characteristic of the LED changes, we can see that the current change is going to be very, very large. So we cannot maintain the nominal operating point for the LED. We would require a very accurate control of this voltage source in order to accurately control the current through the LED. And this is difficult, so usually is not uh, done this way. The typical solution to avoid this problem is to add a series resistance, as shown here, in order to limit the current to the required value, and then we can use uh, different values for the input voltage. So in this way, we are increasing the output resistance of our voltage source. And therefore, from the point of view of the characteristic, we are going to have a characteristic like this one shown here in black. So we can see in that now, if this is the nominal point, the change of the current from the nominal point when the characteristic of the LED changes is much lower. So we are operating around the correct operating value of the LED. Using this expression here, we can obtain the value of the current for different values of the limiting resistance. This solution is very simple, is uh, very cheap. Also, we don't have any problem with EMI or interferences, but the problem is that we are going to have losses in this serial resistance. So the efficiency of this way of supplying LED is going to be low. Also, the current regulation against input voltage variations, temperature changes, LED characteristics, and so on, is not very good. We have some change in the current and therefore in the light that is going to emit the diode. So the conclusion is that this is the common solution when we are operating with low power LEDs, but is not suitable for high power applications due to the low efficiency. Here we can see a classification of the different LED and drivers. We have the first uh, solution is the linear current source, as shown here. We usually employed a transistor in order to do um, accurate regulation of the current through the LED. This transistor is going to operate in linear mode. So this is the common solution also for low power applications in which we have an accurate current regulation, much better than if we use a simple series resistance. 
It is also simple and we have a low uh, number of components. We can also implement PWM dimming to reduce changes in color coordinates and the change in the correlated color temperature. We don't have a um, high EMI generation because the transistor is operating in linear mode, so it's not switching and therefore we don't have a very high EMI. And the problem that this solution has is that it still presents a low efficiency because at the end we have a series uh, element here in which we are going to have losses and therefore the efficiency is similar as in the case of using a series resistance. The second solution is the solution based on switch capacitor converters. In these converters we use only switches, usually transistors also operating in switching mode and capacitors, but we are not using inductors. So this is also a very interesting solution and we can obtain the regulation of the current through the LED. So usually in this type of converters for LED lamps are employed in low power, low, low current applications. They can also be employed in step up and step down applications so we can use an input voltage that can be higher than the LED voltage or lower than the LED voltage. This is not the case of the linear current source in which we need always to have a um, uh, battery voltage higher than the LED voltage. Other advantages are that they are not employing inductors, so they are very small, they are compact. We can integrate even in silicon this type of converters. The complexity and cost are medium, are not uh, very high compared with other solutions. And in this case, we have the transistors operating in switching mode, so we are going to have EMI, but because we are not using inductors or transformers here, then we can have a um, low EMI. And finally, the efficiency of this type of converters is good because uh, the transistors are operating in switching mode, not in linear mode, and therefore the efficiency is higher than in the case of the linear current source. And finally, we have the solution based on switching power supplies. Usually this type of solution employs the CDC converters in which we have switches implemented with transistors and also with diodes. We have inductors and transformers and we have also capacitors. So this type of converters are usually employed for higher output current and higher output power. They can keep low losses and higher efficiency than in the two previous types of uh, solutions that we have seen. The problem is that the cost is higher. We have more components, we have a more complicated uh, control circuit and regulation and so on, but we can have better features. We can implement efficiently and dimming capability for this type of converters. They are also flexible, we can implement multiple functions in them and as a disadvantage we are going to have a higher EMI generation because of the operation of the transistors in switching mode and also because of the incorporation of inductors and transformers in the converter. Starting with the linear current regulator, this slide shows a typical implementation in which we use an operational amplifier to drive the transistor. This transistor is going to operate in linear mode and the operational amplifier is measuring the current through the LEDs using this resistance here this series resistance. So the voltage here is proportional to the current and because the operational ampli amplifier is operating with uh, feedback here, assume uh, 
uh, in the uh, figure here, then as we know, the differential voltage is going to be uh, negligible. So the reference voltage that we have here at this point is going to be equal to the voltage here across the uh, sensing resistance. So the current that we are going to have through the LEDs is the reference voltage divided by the series resistance. So this is very simple to implement, but the main problem is that we have a low efficiency, because if we calculate the efficiency here, which is the power in the LEDs divided by the power supplied by the voltage source, then we can see that the power in the LEDs is equal to the voltage times the current and the power that is supplying the voltage source is um, given by the voltage source times the current through the LED because if we can see here the current that is going here is almost negligible and the current consumed also by the operational amplifier is very small so Approximately the current here is equal to the current here through the LEDs. So we can obtain finally this expression for the efficiency, which is the ratio of the output voltage, the voltage across the LED divided by, divided by the input voltage VV. So most of the losses are in the transistor and they can be calculated by using this expression here is the uh, voltage across the transistor times the current through the load. So the second solution that we have seen to implement LED in drivers is based on switch capacitor converters. Here we are showing as an example the non-inverter SCC operating without load to better understand the operation. So the idea is that we are going to use one capacitor here, C1, which is the switch capacitor. So in a first stage, we close this switch and we charge capacitor C1 up to the input voltage VV. During a second stage, we close this other switch and then we transfer part of the charge of capacitor C1 into capacitor C2. So after a few cycles, we are going to have here an output voltage that is going to be equal to VV. If we analyze this type of converters, in this case the non-inverter converter, here we can obtain this equivalent circuit, which is the average equivalent circuit of the converter. So we have the input voltage, we have a series resistance, which is given by this value here is 1 over the switching frequency times the switch capacitor C1. And then we have the output capacitor C2 and the load resistance. So we can say that the output voltage is going to follow this expression here equal to VV minus the series resistance times the average output current. So this characteristic here shows the behavior of the converter. The output voltage is not ideally equal to VV, but we have this characteristic due to the presence of the series resistance R e Q. We can also employ this expression here in order to obtain the output voltage, the DC output voltage that we are going to have in our converter. Here are other switch capacitor converters that can be more interesting. For example, the voltage inverter in which we can obtain an output voltage which is similar or close to the input voltage but with a negative sign. We can also implement a voltage doubler as shown here and then we can obtain an output voltage which is close to double the input voltage and other common switch capacitor converter is shown here which is the Dixon charge pump which is very useful to obtain high output voltages. Here we can obtain an output voltage here which is 
something similar to five times the input voltage. If you are interested in this topic, I recommend you to take a look at these uh, videos, Power Electronics number 17 to Power Electronics number 24, which is a playlist on my YouTube channel dealing with switch capacitor converters. And finally, the last possibility that we have seen to implement LED drivers is the use of DC-DC switching converters. Here we are showing several possibilities. We have the back converter when we want to have an output voltage lower than the input voltage, the boost converter. Reversely, we can get an output voltage higher than the input voltage. And we have also the possibility of using the back boost converter for other ranges of the output voltage. It can be higher or lower than the input voltage. We can also use converters like SEPIC, CHUK, and so on. Here are some characteristics of these converters that are very well known for the boost converter, the back boost converter, and the back converter. We are showing the ratio of the output voltage over input voltage as a function of the duty cycle. Some typical control methods that we use with DC-DC converters for LED drivers are shown here in this slide. We have the voltage control using the duty cycle and operating in closed loop control in order to regulate the current through the LED. This is very common. We can use also the current mode control using the current through the switch to generate the control signal. And other control methods are the hysteretic control and the quasi-hysteretic control in which we are using the constant on-time control while the off-time is controlled by the inductor current. And then we have also the possibility of implementing constant T-off control where the on-time is controlled by the inductor current. Here is a comparison of the different control methods. For example, in the case of voltage mode control and current mode control, we need to design a closed loop compensator. But in the case of hysteretic, quasi hysteretic and current mode with constant of time, we don't need the closed loop compensator because the control methodology is going to regulate automatically the current through the LED. In terms of uh, variation of the frequency in voltage mode control and current mode control, we have constant frequency. We have variable frequency in hysteretic control and current mode control with constant of time and almost constant frequency with quasi hysteretic control. In terms of slope compensation, we need a slope compensation only for the current mode control if we are going to operate with duty cycle higher than 0 0.5. Regarding PWM dimming performance, we have the best PWM performance in the hysteretic, quasi-hysteretic and current mode with constant of time. And finally, depending on the topologies in which we are going to apply these control methods, we can use any topologies for voltage mode control, current mode control and current mode with constant of time, but hysteretic and quasi-hysteretic controls are only valid for the back type converters, for example the back converter or the forward converter. Hysteretic control is very popular for the implementation of LED drivers because it's very simple to implement, the cost is very low, there is no need of control loop for stabilization, we don't need to implement a compensator or design a compensator, it's inherently stable, it can provide fast transient and a very good PWM dimming and it can be used without output capacitor even for wide dimming range applications. 
The only disadvantage of this control method is that we are going to have a variable switching frequency, so it's not very recommended for EMI sensitive applications. So as we can see here, what we are doing is to measure the current through the inductor, and using a hysteretic comparator, we are generating the driving signal for the switch. So the comparator implements a hysteretic band with a minimum value and a maximum value for the current or through the inductor. So when the switch is activated, the current is increasing so that when the current through the inductor reaches the maximum value of the hysteretic band, the switch is turned off. So the current is going to decrease until reaching the minimum value of the hysteretic band. At this point here, the switch is turned on again and so on. So with this, we can assure that the current through the inductor is going to be in between these two limits at any moment. And therefore, the average current through the LED, which is the average current through the inductor, is going to be also regulated. Here we have an example of implementation of the back converter operating with hysteretic control. So here we can see the back converter. This is the inductor. We are measuring the current through the inductor using this voltage source here, which is generating a voltage which is proportional to the current. And then with this circuitry, we are implementing a hysteretic comparator with a minimum value of 300 milliampere a maximum value of 400 milliampers and an average value of 350 milliampers, which is the current that we want through the LED. So here we are showing also the current through the LED. So the average value is 350 milliampers and the ripple is a little bit lower than in the inductor because the effect of the uh, output capacitor which is also filtering the current through the LED. Finally, let's talk a little bit about dimming. Dimming is the process of controlling the LED luminous flux and brightness and it allows the user to adapt the lighting level to each application. So at the end, what we want is to control the power delivered to the LED. And usually this is done in two ways. One way is called the analog dimming in which what we do is just change the current level that is circulating through the LED. We can do this by changing, for example, here the voltage of the source. We can also change the value of the resistance. And then we are going to have uh, current waveforms like shown here. We have different uh, levels of the current for the different dimming levels. The power in the LED will be like this. And one disadvantage of this dimming methodology is that we are going to have a quite important change in the chromaticity coordinates of the light emitted by the LED because we are changing the current level and this affects the operating point of the LED. So the other possibility that is recommended for high quality applications is the PWN dimming. In this case, what we do is to add a series switch and then we turn on and off this switch. So the current through the LED is going to be like this. It's going to be a square waveforms with different ohm times. Using the ohm time, we can control the average current through the LED. And if we do this at high frequency, usually higher than 100-200 Hz, then the human eye is not going to be able to perceive the, the changing in the light and the human eye is going to see the average value of the light. So in this case, we can see that the power is going to follow these expressions here. And in this expression, this part here is constant and we can see that the power applied to the LED is proportional to our control parameter, which is the on time or the duty cycle, if we want, which is the ratio between the on time and the switching period. 
So this dimming methodology is much better in terms of color quality because we are operating the LED always with the same current level and in this way we can keep the operating point of the LED more constant than in the case of analog dimming. Well, this is all today in this presentation. I hope that you find this presentation useful for your future activities. Please, as usual, let me know if you have any comment or question on the comment section. Thank you very much for watching this video and I hope to see you in the next video. Goodbye now.